So I want to share this new little app I created to pre-process images in HueForge. I was talking with Steve the other day, and I was mentioning that one of the things I think HueForge is great at is creating things like cartoons or illustrations or in particular signs, flat shaded objects. I think it's really good at, but there's an issue when you have two colors that are the same value. It's really hard to be able to get them to work correctly, hard to be able to target these colors. If I look over here and let's look at the luminous value here, these are almost identical. And HueForge has a little bit of work in discerning these two colors by using the combo. And then there's other things like brightness, contrast, so that one doesn't work. But there's some of these that might help. Anyway, the point being that really what you want is you, know, you want this to be a little brighter gray. And so the way you do that is by selecting each one of these colors and assigning an evenly spaced grayscale. So ideally you want black and white, and then you want these two to be like 133 and 166% gray. So what I want to show you is this little app that I wrote. It's on the web. Anybody can use it. It's for free. It's at cwme forward slash gray picks. And the way this works is you just identify the number of grays you want in your image. You hit this choose file, and let's just grab that same image here. And you'll see that it, it actually say, converts that file and so uses the maximum number. In this case, we only have four, but if I want to use three, it'll be that much. It goes from three to 16 colors. So ideally you want to put it at whatever the number of colors that you want, expect to have in the image. Let's show another example of something like this. You can see that you can take a photograph and you can do the same thing. So if you're trying to posterize or create kind of a cartoon look or a comic look, you can use this to help do that as well. It does a pretty good job. And then also I'll mention that there is, uh, and it's not really a bug, but it's just the way that canvas displays. But let's take this piece of artwork that I used. And let, me, let me go, let's move it to five. There's five is you know, right here. So there's five. So that basically converts that artwork. And let's open up that artwork and take a look at it. So here we are. This is the actual artwork I was looking at. And this particular artwork I generated knowing that I wanted a lot of variety in the grays. So it actually wasn't a big issue, but had these greens and reds been the same value, I would have had a lot harder time targeting these images with filaments. By the way, you'll see little artifacting around the transparent areas of some of these pixels. Don't worry about that. If you save the image, it's going to look fine in HueForge. That's not an issue. It's, in fact, I think it's just a function of the HTML page that it's being rendered on. Okay, so we're back in HueForge, and let's talk about this a little bit in, in targeting. This is how we target when we're using this flat color-based image. Let's just grab a scarlet red, for instance, put it here, and we'll put the blue, like a green to stick that here. And you see that, let's go ahead as we start on the white, let's just give it a, a ivory white here. So as we start moving this up and down, you'll see that it's becoming extremely hard to try and target these. And I might be able to do it with just there. That looks like it. This is the default settings, but that's about the best I can get for these two colors, even though they're brighter than that. So now let's go ahead and let's try adding that image that we created in gray picks. Okay, here we have it. We'll grab this and it'll go into here. And now you can see that we can much more easily target these images. And that's really the value and the strength of this little tool. So one other thing I might mention to you is that this actually could run locally on your machine too. You just right click on it and you basically, uh, you want to save as, do a save as here. It'll save the HTML and then you can drag drop it into your browser and it'll just run. So you don't need to access it from my server. You can just run it if you want as well. That's just as easy and you're free to use it for your personal use that way. Anyway, knock yourself out of this. It's a fun little tool and hope you find it interesting and may help some of you in your Hugh Fortune journey. See you online. Talk to you later. Bye.